a team, it seems, has one great player in San Diego State. No exception. They have one in Megan Gerardo, who is the Conference Player of the Year. Her numbers really speak. I mean, 14 goals on the season. She has really stepped it up. She is a natural striker. A lot of people claim that she is a right-footed soccer player, but she can go either way. She runs up the left side, patrolling that flank, and she gets a lot of support. So when she gets the ball, she'll make a push. She'll try to lob it into the middle, but she's also a long-range striker, and she can bend the ball. San Diego State defensively, they can stop you in your tracks. They have a goalkeeper in Rachel Boaz, who has the top save percentage in the conference. She's the type of player that has improved her game physically, but more important, mentally. With a little sports psychology work over the summer, she has come in and be a key component to this Aztec squad. New Mexico, they have a lot of different contributors, and that means that they spread the wealth offensively. Well, it's called a three-headed monster, and Kit Vela, the head coach in New Mexico, likes what she sees not only in the middle but up front as well speaking of the middle rachel montoya in that 442 formation or 451 formation she'll play in the middle but mark my words she will push and then you see natalie jinx now she'll set up top and with three goals she certainly is a goal scorer attacking minded as well and then the last part of the three-headed monster is stephanie rowe a player that has an attacking mind she's also very crafty with the ball and very good 1v1 and New Mexico will have to figure out how to score against the San Diego team that has three consecutive shutouts. And in the second half, they've only allowed one goal all year. Starting lineups, and we'll take a look at them with San Diego State and New Mexico. Well, for New Mexico, let's start in the back with Cornell. She's played all but 45 minutes in a possible 7,600-minute situation. She's got Fleming, Irwin there, and Ellison, who sit right in front of her, Montoya, who we just talked about. Webster, Old Gein, O'Connor, Jinx, and Rowe all in an attacking mind. And San Diego State, the team that won the regular season title. Talked about what Boaz does in the nets, but in front is Palmer, Spots, Johnson, McGlinchey. Those outside backs will certainly push. Gerardo, we know what she can do. Tiffany Hurst, probably one of the best players on this team. Barba, a freshman who's having just an absolute wonderful season. Locker, Booth, and Keen all can score as well. And Kit Villa, the head coach for New Mexico, her 12th year. To the game, Tammy. Well, for San Diego State, it's going to be really crucial that they try to possess with a purpose. Spread the field as well. You don't want to possess and not have an option for New Mexico. Play hard. Battle for 90 minutes. And we are just about ready to go. New Mexico and San Diego State. New Mexico in the red uniforms. San Diego State in the white. And here we go as the Lobos move from our left to our right. And San Diego State has it to start out. Mike Friesen and his team, a well-oiled machine coming in at 18-1-1, and, and he is the 2012 Mountain West Coach of the Year, by the way. Recently named that. Deems this season as a magical season. He has been working to build this program for five years, has the right mix of seniors and good balance, but added a sports psychology element to this year by bringing in assistant coach Juan Pablo, who's added that, and that's paid. 12-game unbeaten streak here for San Diego State coming in. Pass going back to Gerardo. There's a series history. San Diego State leading that, and they played each other earlier this year, and San Diego State won it. It's a one-nothing victory on October the 26th. And shutouts are nothing new for San Diego State. I mentioned three straight shutouts coming into this, and they have 11 shutouts this season. And New Mexico with it. So Connor passed it on the far side. Now it gets to midfield. And a takedown. They both coaches speaking with us yesterday at their practices. And they both agreed that these are two soccer teams that just play solid soccer. They're very technically sound. They each have superstars or a superstar. But they battle, and they both know they battle. And both coaches mentioned that they were interested in the battle that was going to ensue today. So San Diego State on the kick. And the Aztecs trying to make something happen here on offense early on. But nice play there by New Mexico and defensively, Lauren Irwin, the senior from Anaheim, making that play. 
Oh, and there is a takedown, and that was painful. <laughs> Got an injured Lobo down right now. And there is no foul on that play. That was a, a legal tackle going for the ball and strictly played the ball, and that's a good no call by the officials. Natalie Jenks went down, but she's back up and back in action on the pass in. It's headed towards the San Diego goal. Now it goes out. Important to establish that there has been a feisty competition and rivalry that's been established, not only between these players of these two teams, but also Mike Friesen and Kit Vela, the two head coaches as well over the years. It's friendly, but it's very competitive throughout the season. This one stays with New Mexico, the defending champs. They beat Wyoming 2-0 last year in the championship game. Here is Montoya, pass in the middle. It's knocked out of there and then headed forward by San Diego State. And here is the goalkeeper for the Aztecs, who we featured in our open, Rachel Boaz. 0.51 goals against average, first in the conference. And that's headed forward by the Aztecs, and it goes out over on the far sideline. Pretty even so far, Tammy. Well, I like the pace. Both of these teams bring out pace right out of the gates, and let's not forget one of our keys that we will continue to revisit for New Mexico. They play 45 good minutes, especially in the first half. Their opponents only score three goals, but in the second half, they've given up to their opponents 13 goals in second half action. Kit Bella said, we have to play hard for 90 minutes. We know San Diego State isn't gonna give us anything. Yeah, they've only given up one goal in the second half all year. So that tells you how they just clamp down on the defense, the Aztecs do. Long pass ahead. Now they kick it back out, work the perimeter, and it is knocked out by Jenks. So Natalie Jenks, after that tough tackle, has been able to hang in there, and that's what we were talking about, the goals by half. San Diego State outscoring opponents 20 to one in the second half. When you look at that graphic, though, you see just how many goals San Diego State has scored. I mean, this is an attacking-minded San Diego State team. They don't sit back and pack it in. I mean, they want to get up. They want to push their outside backs. They will push, and they get a lot of support. The core players in the middle are the key to this team. And when you have a striker like Gerardo, she gets out on the loose and gets deep in the corner. This is a deadly team. Here's spots for San Diego State as they pass it around near midfield. Now they get it over on the near sideline for Palmer. Haley Palmer, she'll run the offense and uh, really kind of organize things for them. She had an assist on the only goal against New Mexico that was scored in the game earlier this year. Kelsey Booth scored that goal. It's Kelly Cornell, goalkeeper for New Mexico as they get it into San Diego State territory. Nice header there by Brianna Webster. Webster number 11. She had a header for the goal in the semifinal, the one nothing win over Nevada. It was only her second goal of the season. Nothing, nothing. Now here's Jenks, Natalie Jenks for New Mexico. The nice move there in the far corner, but it's taken away and kicked out of there. But New Mexico still trying to apply some pressure here. And here comes San Diego State. And they will make a move into the offensive end. mentioned uh, Megan Gerardo in the open. She hasn't had much of an opportunity with the ball so far. And here comes Gerardo to try to knock that one away as it goes out on the near side. And we'll see if San Diego State can make something happen here. As Palmer tosses it in and misses connection there. 
Nice play there by Hannah Keen to keep things happening for San Diego State. This is where you're gonna see San Diego State possess the ball with a purpose. They wanna try to get deep into the corner and now you watch in the throw in. They're likely not gonna rush and play anything direct. They're gonna try to switch the field of play. Here they go and maybe make a run up the right side, getting that ball back into the middle. It's Hannah Keen who made that play, the sophomore from Sacramento, California. Now kicking in the middle. Looking for Gerardo, but it's knocked away. Good defense by New Mexico there. Very good defense by New Mexico. They're shoring things up, and I'm seeing communication. That is great, and it starts in the back line. That back line anchoring this defense. They've had some bumps and bruises, but Kit Bella says that my back line has carried us through those bumps and bruises. Good header by Keene. They cannot score. San Diego State, they want to zip the ball around, and this is what Mike Friesen talks about when he says, let's zip the ball around. And you see New Mexico doing a good job. Their work rate is strong. How many red jerseys do you see inside the 18, packing it up in that communication, as I mentioned? A good opportunity, a shot, not quite on frame for San Diego State, but nonetheless, they're in the attacking mode. Cornell boots it to midfield, and then it's knocked out. Well, New Mexico's made some key defensive plays, I think, early in this game. It's a team that has played together in the back line for a lot of years, notably Nair and Irwin, who were juniors and seniors, played a lot of minutes together. O'Connor booting it ahead, but San Diego State able to get it out of there. Hurst passed it along the far sideline. Now it's booted ahead. Three Lobos are back there. So New Mexico's played very tight defensively against the San Diego State team that can be explosive at times. San Diego State, one shot, one shot on goal so far. None for New Mexico. This goes out in the corner. Now, San Diego State will toss it in here. As it's banged around, goes out again over in the corner. And you see New Mexico, who has taken shape in the formation of roughly a 4-5-1, that four in the back line, and then five players in the middle with one sitting up top who will run. And that direct type of soccer, soccer right there gives number seven for New Mexico, Stephanie Rowe, the chance to hit up front and maybe push and attack that back line of San Diego State. Here she goes making a run right there. Now the Aztecs at midfield. There is Gerardo passing it back. Trying to get a return pass, but it's knocked away by the Lobos. That's kicked back in where it's controlled by New Mexico, and now Kelly Cornell, the goalkeeper, comes out, the senior from San Clemente, California. Help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy. Text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund, CBS Cares. We know that there are a lot of families earlier this week that were affected on the East Coast, all up and down, the Nor'easter that combined with that hurricane. Several people from our network, CBS Sports Network, Worked extremely hard this week to make sure that we could get this game on air, and I want to tip my hat to all those players and all those families and wish them the best. Hopefully we can raise some money. Yeah, a lot of people are struggling right now, so hang in there, everybody, on the East Coast. Here we have just amazing weather. If you like it hot, it's up around 90 degrees this afternoon in San Diego. Hard to believe in November. A good crowd here at San Diego State. Gracious hosts of the tournament. The San Diego State, the 2009 champs. New Mexico will have it here on the toss in. It'll be Brooke Ellison. New Mexico's been solid. That 2010 2011 NCAA tournament run, they have built that program. Kit Vela, first couple years, she struggled. They didn't even have a winning record, and she wanted to get her administration to believe, and her husband is the assistant coach, Jorge Vela, and the two of them do a fantastic job. They try to recruit locally, but you'll see some L.A. players and some 
players from Pasadena and other type of players from the California area on their squad as well. And what they've built is a program where they feel like they can go out and recruit not just in their local area, but regionally and nationally as well. Coach Vela played soccer and softball at Brown University, the East Coast. Now the Aztecs playing a little keep away here. Nice pass forward. And here comes San Diego State with Kelsey Booth. Tries to pass in the middle and it's intercepted. Nice job defensively there by Lauren Irwin. We've called her name a couple times. The senior from Anaheim. Now this pass ahead, again handled by New Mexico. And they boot it forward. And it gets banged around on the far sideline at midfield and kicked forward. And here comes Gerardo trying to get to that, but she won't be able to. Now that's passed into the middle by Keen and booted out of there. And San Diego State trying to make something happen, but you know it's just going back and forth right now. Here's Natalie Jenks. What a pass! And that wow. one goes to the line. What happens when New Mexico sits back in that 4-5-1 formation that we've talked about is it's going to force San Diego State to play a closer game, a tighter game. So they're going to look to zip the ball around, create some triangles, which gives you some passing angles, 10, 12-yard passes to try to work that ball up the field. Jordan Craig checked in for New Mexico. And now the Lobos have it at midfield as Brianna Webster controls the junior from Huntington Beach, California. But it goes out on the far sideline and San Diego State will toss it in. Still nothing, nothing and really not a whole lot of opportunity for either team, Tammy. Well, in the substitution in right now for Jordan Craig, you're going to love the story about her. She has suffered two knee injuries. She is one of the few players in NCAA that is allowed to use her two red shirt years because of those injuries. She brings in fitness. She brings in pace. And Coach Kit Vela told us yesterday she's just awesome. It's too bad that she's dinged up. But during those two injuries and that rehab stint that she had, she used that as an opportunity to improve her health in terms of strength and fitness, and it definitely shows on the field. Here come the Aztecs. Pass ahead for Gerardo, but led her too far, and it's taken away. Now Cornell will kick it out of there. All the way past the midfield line. 16th minute of the game, we have no score, and really only one chance to score for San Diego State. Right here. Now Jordan Craig, the 23-year-old, again, the reason why she's so old, six years at New Mexico, two redshirt years, two knee injuries, using perseverance and a winning attitude, according to Kit Vela, to be able to come back and battle through. At times, she thought her career was over, especially on the second knee injury, which came to her her senior year. She had a starting position lined up and an exceptional semester of spring training and then the letdown but she has battled back and she is the true inspiration and true definition of student athlete. This one goes all the way across the line and New Mexico will have it. So Kelly Cornell will have the kick here. She had five straight shutouts earlier this season from mid-September into October and just eight shutouts on the year as the goalkeeper for New Mexico. And here come the Lobos. Elba Olguin had it there. And there's Olguin spinning around. Nice move to punch it ahead for Jenks. And that one is sent towards the middle. And here comes San Diego State with a little operating room here for Megan Gerardo. And Gerardo with the speed. But a nice defensive play there. Knocking the ball away in Mexico. Give a lot of credit there to Liz Nair. We talked about Nair and Irwin shoring up the defense there. They play the center back position. And you saw the effort there by Nair. Now that ball got away a little bit too far ahead of her for Joado to be able to play. 
uncharacteristic of Gerardo to lose that on the dribble. She has speed, but good hustle by Nair at the same time. Now battle for it on the far side. And New Mexico, well-placed passing there by the Lobos. And they're trying to set up their attack. And pass too far for Natalie Jenks. Jenks has been uh, all over the place in this game, trying to get something going for the Lobos. Senior from Albuquerque. There's Natalie. Jenks, nine points, third on the team. Three goals this year. And the pass goes back to the goalkeeper, Cornell. Quickly with the outlet pass. And it's booted out of there by Sinead, Fleming Sinead for New Mexico. And this will get passed back to Boaz. And she fires it ahead, the right into the New Mexico players. And here come the Lobos again. Brooke Ellison's pass into the middle, gets kicked around and now booted out. But Brianna Webster handles it. Keeps things going for the Lobos. Ooh. And it's good shape with Brianna Webster. You see how she's kind of sitting in front of that defensive line in New Mexico, positioning herself right in the middle, and she is getting found, a term in soccer that I like to use. She gets found, which means she's making herself available. Her teammates find her. New Mexico using a bit of direct soccer from the back third to the middle, but once they get into the middle third, they're building their attack from that middle third all the way in as those numbers and those red jerseys continue to push forward. Rachel Montoya, she was a little shaken up there on that play, now she kicks it into the middle. And nice jump and a catch there by the goalkeeper for San Diego State, Rachel Boaz, the sophomore from Murrieta, California. And now Boaz with the big kick, high in the air. And a couple of headers later, New Mexico with it. And it goes back to Cornell. It's only one shot for each team. I want to correct the, the hometown there, Murrieta, California. I beautiful. thought I knew all the towns in California, and I messed that one up. <laughs> That's all right. Us. It's a beautiful place, though. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me where it is exactly. <laughs> North on Interstate 15, about oh, 40 <laughs> minutes from here, and it really is a I beautiful place. I thought I had my, my California and Southern California knowledge all down. Here comes San Diego State. As O'Connor had it, now it's put into the box and taken by the goalkeeper, Cornell. This is where you're seeing how good New Mexico is, and this is why they play this formation. Now, San Diego State has seen a 4-5-1 formation quite a bit. Why? Because they merit that type of attention. They merit teams being able to try to pack it in and try to beat them 1-0 to zero because that's their best chance. But New Mexico is shoring up all the little details, replacing players who are out of position, their communication as well, and they are running at players, not backing away. Here's Gerardo. Gerardo surveying the defense, passes ahead, and coming out to grab it is the goalkeeper once again, Cornell. Good anticipation there by Kelly Cornell. And the ball's kicked all the way across the field. Unable to track it down is Brooke Ellison, so San Diego State will have it back. And what a great story of Kelly Cornell, the senior goalkeeper, has played over 7,500 minutes out of a possible 7,600 minutes, if you will. And she has the most career starts as a New Mexico Lobo as well. Only 45 minutes shy of playing every possible minute that you could play as a senior. That is amazing. That's called health, and that's called bringing it every day. 25th minute of this game, and we're still scoreless, and we haven't had many opportunities, really, as this one goes out in the corner. Just one shot for each team. And now we will have a corner kick coming up. One apiece in that category. Let's see if San Diego State setting up, it looks like setting up for the outswinger. 
Pass in the middle, it's knocked around, headed, score! The Aztecs are on the board. Well, several players had a chance at that one. We'll have to see who actually knocked it in. I believe that was Kelsey Booth who got the goal. Well, it's a perfectly played corner kick. They set up for the outswinger, but you see as that ball is moving outward away from the goalie, that's exactly what they wanted to do, is not allow Kelly Cornell to get her hands on it on first take off the kick. So what they do is as they move forward, they push for the header. And New Mexico, unfortunately, could not clear it. And Kelsey Booth was in the perfect position. Well, her third goal of the year, two of them have been against New Mexico. So they have to figure out a way to contain Kelsey Booth, the sophomore from Concord, California. one nothing, San Diego State in the 2012 Mountain West Soccer Championship. Scion has been helping people follow their dreams for nearly 10 years. If you've already started turning your passion into your profession, we can help you take it to the next level. Submit your business plan and other materials to our Motivate program. You could be set up with industry experts, a Scion, and $10,000 for your business. It's what's inside that moves us. What moves you? Learn more at Scion.com motivate. With a five-star overall safety rating and Scion Service Boost Complimentary Maintenance Plan, the Scion TC is made to handle the streets. Golden Corral's all-new, all-American carving station is open. It's like the pork steamship round came off a fancy buffet in Vegas. It's Golden Corral's all-American carvers. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet, all for one amazingly low price, and it's only at Golden Corral. Today we're talking to people about Milo's. Let's say you got a group of kids that all think they're Rembrandt. Well, Milo's tracks and remembers all of your purchases automatically, so you can look up whatever shade of blue that used to be and paint right over all that art. Boom! Looks as good as it did the first time. Cool. We could use that. We scan, Milo's remembers. Your life gets easier. Milo's. Sign up in your Lowe's store today. Lowe's. Never stop improving. There's no shortage of beautiful sights in San Diego. How about La Jolla Cove? La Jolla just outside of San Diego, and the San Diego State Aztecs lead it 1-0 here in the first half of the Mountain West Tournament Championship game after the goal by Kelsey Booth on the assist from Carly Johnson. And now, Tammy, I wonder about New Mexico if they take more chances. No time for them to panic. They may want to think when they get across center field, they may want to think about changing their shape a little. Instead of having one runner up front and jinx, they might want to push two or three numbers. That's only if they can get across center field. They still want to be defensive minded because San Diego State will continue to attack and they will strike where they can. That's the voice of Tammy Blackburn. I'm Joe Castellano. And, uh, just a beautiful afternoon for soccer. Good crowd on hand for this championship game. San Diego State, they know they're going to the NCAA tournament, New Mexico needs a win here to be able to do that. Nice takeaway there, good defense again by the Lobos and Dylan O'Connor. There's that goal again from Booth and a lot of different Aztecs had a shot at this one. Well again, just set up as an outswing for the uh, corner kick there by San Diego State. 
and they purposely want to keep that ball away from Kelly Cornell. That's why they didn't set up for the end swinger there, but just perfectly played and using your head anytime that ball comes down with trajectory the way that it did in that spin. And fortunately for San Diego State, it was a bit of a miscue for New Mexico. Here's the boot by Boaz. He goes all the way down. And here's a chance for the Aztecs now. Looking for Gerardo, but that pass is way out of her reach. You'll see San Diego State shift, although it's just one nothing, and it's still anybody's match. You will see them shift now to emphasizing one of their keys even more, which is possession with the priority. They will try to possess the ball. Time of possession, much like in football, is going to be a factor for Mike Friesen in San Diego State. Remember, when you're possessing the ball, you're not only attacking, but you're also playing defense because your opponent is not attacking. Palmer passes it in. And Barba. San Diego State has both shots on goal in this game. And certainly, New Mexico has uh, been more on the defensive here in the last four or five minutes. Aztecs, do they start to wear on teams? Is that why they're so good in the second half? Well, they have balance. There's no doubt about it. They have depth. And Mike Friesen, he will go to his bench whenever he needs to. He has players that can come in at various positions, and the level of play does not drop. That one goes out. We got a substitution here is coming in is number eight, Alexis Leva, the sophomore from Long Beach, California. Checking in for Natalie Jenks. Certainly has had an eventful first half. She recovered from a hard tackle right at the beginning of the game. A good substitution though for Kit Vela with Leba, a midfielder who still has that attacking mind. And she'll work well with Jordan Craig, number 18, who checked into this ball game and looks very physically fit, not afraid to run. I like Jordan Craig's chances here for New Mexico. If there's gonna be somebody that's gonna get over the top and play direct and play a chase, it's her. 26th minute, getting more substitutions. It's Skinner in for Locker here for San Diego State. Here is Palmer for the Aztecs to Gerardo. Gerardo around the perimeter. Now fires one towards the net. Didn't get a, her best piece of that one though, actually. Looked like more of a knuckleball. A similar shot though, however, in the semifinals that we saw her take. Again, a natural striker. She has a lot of power. And you see that she's going away from the goal. Watch how she turns and strikes it. Tries to bend it a little bit in that upper V. Again, her body right now taking her away from goal. She turns, she bends it a little bit, doesn't quite get her foot on it the way she normally would with that power. Right, I saw her wind up for that. I was expecting a lot more velocity. And that goes back to Boaz, who quickly lofts one out of her area. And San Diego State now will try to move it forward. And actually, they're gonna reverse field and go to the far side. Now up the field, but it's knocked out by New Mexico. Wind is picked up a little bit here at San Diego State. Actually feels good to a lot of the spectators because it's a hot afternoon. Now it's headed forward by the Aztecs. But again, good defense by New Mexico, and it's booted out of there that time by Lauren Irwin. Don't forget to tune in to lead off on CBS Sports Network at midnight Eastern time every weeknight. That's lead off weeknights on CBS Sports Network. Doug Gottlieb and Ali LaForce. Great to have Doug Gottlieb as a member of the CBS Sports Network team. Enjoy listening to him and really respect his analysis and his opinions. Barba with it now for San Diego State. I agree. Always enjoyed listening to him. Former college basketball stud. His brother Greg was an assistant basketball coach at San Diego State University, assisted Steve Fisher before going off and growing on to better things. So the Gottlieb family a bit familiar with San Diego State University. Big win for the football team yesterday. 
Boise State victory, that's a top ranked Boise State team and the positioning for bowl games just got more interesting for San Diego State University and head coach Rocky Long. Here comes New Mexico now. They really haven't had many opportunities. It goes out on the far side, but they just haven't had many opportunities on offense in this game. Three shots to one, San Diego State, the advantage over New Mexico. And Gerardo looking for this pass spinning around. Here is Megan Gerardo trying to make a move, but it's kicked out, booted towards the stands. Another nice defensive play by the Lobos and Dylan O'Connor. She has snuffed out several passes in the first half. Pass in by Palmer, and a long pass. It's kicked high in the air now. Finally comes down, a shot, and it's over the crossbar. And as the shot was taken on the perimeter there by Tiffany Hurst, the senior from Santa Rosa. She's explosive. Now she plays in a 4-3-3 formation. She's a holding mid, but you just get a sense of how far she will push forward. She strikes that off balance with her left foot, and that's the type of athletic player that Tiffany Hurst is. Coach Mike Friesen telling us yesterday that he wanted to recruit athletes. He felt like he had all the necessary elements, pace, they could spread the field, they were possession-minded. But he knew that in order to win and get into the NCAA tournament each year and make it to the Elite Eight or College Cup, he had to recruit, recruit athletes, and he's done that. And she's a red shirt, been a redshirt as a junior, now a senior, and first team all Mountain West is Tiffany Hurst. He, he also emphasized that on their recruiting visits, they had to fit. So if you were a member of the squad and you were here hosting a recruit, their feedback to the coaching staff was important. There is the head coach of the Aztecs, Mike Friesen, the 2012 Mountain West Coach of the Year. Feels like the chemistry of this team has hands down been the best ever in his time here at San Diego State University. 11-0 at home. 12 game unbeaten streak coming into this game. 18-1-1 on the year. All kinds of superlatives. Some rough play right there. Yes. Leva really went after that ball, trying yeah. to be a ball winner in the air, and she ran into SDSU's number 21, Rachel McGlinchey. So now San Diego State with the free kick. And that one is knocked out of there. But on the deflection, it goes out after a shot was taken by Skinner. And this crowd loves it. You hear them clapping as they surround us in our announced position here. And they're clapping because it's another set piece chance for San Diego State. Remember, their only goal of this game came on that outswinger from a corner kick a few minutes ago. So this is the third corner kick for them. It's high in the air. And booted over the goal. The Cornell read that well, the goalie for New Mexico. It was a long far side post outswing. And you see Cornell try to get out there and try to reach it. Now the dangerous part about this ball is that when she doesn't gather it, the ball is loose and in front of the goal for what is unseemingly <laughs> too long for New Mexico. But San Diego State cannot find the back of the net. So another opportunity for San Diego State. Goes by the boards. They've outshot New Mexico six to one so far in this game. Just one goal, so the Lobo's still in it. Long pass, and too much of a lead pass there. There's no connection for Elba Olguin, who was tracking that down. He couldn't get there. Palmer passes to the middle, uh, middle of the field, and now it's back to Palmer. Ooh, just knocked away. A nice defensive play there by Montoya. We haven't called her name as much as we thought. Well, she steps in and makes a nice stop there. Yes, she is she wanting to attack, and again, they're looking to possess the ball. But the more the New Mexico players will step in and they'll run at those players without letting them go by, the better their chances are at a counterattack. A good defensive play right here by Dylan O'Connor, number three for New Mexico. Yeah, the freshman O'Connor has been impressive from West Hills, California. 
as she's been able to take balls away throughout the first half. That one rolls all the way out. Here's O'Connor. Good defensive work. First a good stop by Montoya, and then here's that O'Connor defensive step up by New Mexico that I just mentioned. And you see, anytime New Mexico can stop SDSU's attack, they have a chance to possess the ball and work that ball up into the final third as carefully as they can, bringing numbers forward. Now, Gerardo tried to go on the offensive, but it's booted away. Boaz with a little fake pass there. Now wings it up the near side to Palmer. Haley Palmer, the junior from Windsor, California, the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. Number 23 who heads the ball right there. Here is Gerardo. Gerardo going one on two, he just floats one into the middle, nobody there. Now Gerardo trying to come up with a takeaway there, but couldn't do it. And it's booted ahead. Here's Montoya. Nice little pass back to her teammate, Sophie Metz. And now it'll be free kick here for New Mexico. Again, New Mexico wanting to push the ball, and I like this. Look at the bump from the back, San Diego State. She didn't play the ball. That's number 23, Palmer, that we've talked about. You gotta be careful. New Mexico is good in these set pieces, especially direct over the top. Second free kick here for them, and Montoya gets rejected on that. Here's a shot a save by Boaz. A heck of a strike by Fleming, the defender who plays in that center position. That ball is loose, and she kept it low, right on frame. Fleming Sinead, the senior from Pasadena, California, just drilled that shot. That was the best scoring opportunity New Mexico has had. And it comes back to Boaz. Shank that kick right there and it goes out. That was not the way she wanted to pass that ahead. So now the Lobos get a chance. Comes to the top now. Here's Montoya trying to get it in the middle and it's knocked away. Goes to O'Connor and kicked out of there. Lauren Irwin tried to pass ahead, but San Diego State will have it. New Mexico looks, looks good, but on that play right there, there has to be a sense of urgency to possess the ball a little bit more. Irwin uncharacteristically kicking that ball out of bounds and San Diego State the opportunity to run down this left side here. Metz comes in. Booth, who scored the only goal of this game, checks out for San Diego State. That goal came in the 23rd minute. This time is winding down the 37th minute here of the first half. A good defensive play by San Diego State. And that was Alguin, Elba Alguin for New Mexico, knocking that away. And now it is booted forward and all the way down. And finally taken by Cornell. Now Cornell with the high kick. And that one will settle out. And we're gonna get another substitution. We'll check on that. Here's Olguin for New Mexico to Montoya, but it's kicked out of there. They control it again. Go to the far side. See if they can get a reversal here. Long shot and it goes over the goal. Good offensive sequence by New Mexico. I like the way that they're tightening up inside when they get that ball just either inside the 18 or right on top of the 18. They're shoring up their passing angle, shorter 10 to 12 yard passes, a little bit snappier. And then a long range shot from the outside, which I think is a good, a good long range shot for New Mexico. Here are your substitutions. Geis is in, Craig is out, Wheeler coming in. That shot was by 
Fleming Sinead, by the way. So New Mexico's had some opportunities in uh, recent times here in the last four or five minutes to finally get something on goal. They've been outshot though, six to two. Shots on goal are two to one in favor of San Diego State. Now New Mexico will have it. The fans are reacting, didn't like this call. Pass comes into the corner. Pass intended for Geis, who just checked in. But San Diego State will have it. Here's what New Mexico needs to adjust. When they get the ball over yeah. center field line and they have throw-ins, they haven't made anything of the last three throw-ins from the right side. They need to make something more of them instead of just being content to let SDSU throw the ball in and go the other way. That's headed to the sideline, and it goes out. Unable to control it was O'Connor. So now Palmer will toss it in. Palmer looking, trying to get it to Gerardo, but she was just smothered by red jerseys. Now Palmer working along the sideline, passes it back. Content with the one nothing lead San Diego State or no? Oh no, not content <laughs> at all. But they're playing smart. You see, New Mexico's playing into their game right now. If San Diego State wants to possess the ball. Here's Gerardo, an opportunity. Oh, Cornell comes out, it's danger time, but it comes out and the threat is quashed. So that was a good opportunity there for Gerardo, probably her best opportunity of the game. San Diego State will take this type of possession any day, and New Mexico is going to continue to be a little bit lackadaisical. And again, Cornell comes out, and Cornell has it. So Kelly Cornell making some good decisions as it turns out. And when you don't try to possess the ball if you're New Mexico, here's what happens. San Diego State, they'll be zippy about it. They'll move the ball up the field, especially with speed by this player right here, Gerardo, who almost got her foot on it, and that goal was wide open. The later chance right here, Cornell comes out off her line once again, taking a few risks, but I think that she's just not getting that necessarily that support that she needs, and certainly San Diego State's forwards are running right at that defensive line. Now, what about Cornell risk versus reward there? I mean, she definitely took a couple chances to make the play, and it turned out in her favor. And remember, she's a veteran goalie. She's played a lot of minutes. She has seen these scenarios before. She just saw San Diego State about 10 days ago right here on this very field. She is well aware of the scouting report and what some of their forwards can do as well. Sometimes you have to take a risk, especially in tournament championship is on the line. You got to go to the NCAA if you win this game for New Mexico. She keeps it a one nothing game. Only goal was scored by Booth, and that was in the 23rd minute for San Diego State. Montoya now was trying to control, but the Aztecs kick it around and pass forward now by the Lobos. O'Connor, and oh, a collision there in the middle of the field. That was really rough there for the freshman. Annie Wheeler for New Mexico was involved in that one, along with Carly Johnson for San Diego State. Now we'll get the kick here from the goalkeeper. Boaz coming up at halftime. First half highlights and stats. We'll take a look at the Mountain West Conference postseason awards. All that coming up and more coming up at the half. Highlights from other college conferences also will be involved. No surprise that Marquette was able to take care of Georgetown today, although it was a great battle. I had a chance to watch that match. It's Big East Championship. Dave Nolan and Marcus Rudders, two of the best coaches in the nation. Under three minutes to go in the first half. A little battle at midfield now gets kicked out on the far sideline. Conference USA's University of Central Florida showing that their soccer team has built a nice little program down there and got on the board early 2-0. Long pass goes out, so the Lobos will have it. Trying to make a run at tying this game here at the end of the first half. 
And they know how tough, I'm sure they look at the stat sheet just like we do, they know how tough it is to score against San Diego State in the second half. As we mentioned earlier, in case you're just joining us, the Aztecs have only given up one goal all year in the second half. Now San Diego State will try to control it. That pass is knocked away. Montoya tracking it down here for New Mexico. Now Montoya gives it up and it goes out. Missed connection there. Palmer passes ahead as Barba is controlling it for San Diego State. Aztecs have outshot New Mexico seven to three and have the advantage of shots on goal three to one. As O'Connor passes it ahead, but it's taken away and kicked forward here by Carly Johnson. But New Mexico with it. And Montoya trying to track it down in the corner, but just can't get there. Time running down here in the first half, in the final minute. Now Boaz, a little stutter step, and kicks all the way to midfield, where it's headed by New Mexico. And Carly Johnson, only eight seconds to go in the half. Final push here for Palmer. And that is the end of the first half. With the score, San Diego State one, New Mexico nothing. 400 minutes now without a goal allowed for San Diego State. Remember, we talked about how they've had three consecutive shutouts coming into this game. And the only goal was scored by that young lady right there. You saw Kelsey Booth. Scored the only goal, the sophomore from Concord, California. Scored at the 23rd minute on an assist from Johnson. An excellent job by Rachel Boaz as the goalkeeper for San Diego State. Really, both goalkeepers were solid, and Cornell took some chances and made some really nice saves on the other end for New Mexico. And joining us now, head coach of the team that leads at the half one nothing, Mike Friesen, the 2012 Mountain West Coach of the Year. Mike, how do you uh, assess the way your team played in the first half, got the lead? Uh, what, what would you like to see your team do better as well in the second half? Well, I thought the first half, you know, obviously we're happy to have a lead. Um, and the, early in the game, I thought we did a good job of putting the ball on the ground and playing. And I thought late we kind of fell into their trap of, you know, the game's getting really vertical and direct and it's bouncing, it's windy and, and a, lot of, a lot of challenges. What we want to do better is keep the ball, put it on the ground, change the point of attack, open them up um, and finish them off, quite frankly. I mean, I think this is a, this is a game that um, if we can do those things that we can take care of pretty easily in the second half. Coach, you just said keep the ball. Those operative words out of your mouth. Time of possession is a priority for you. How much will you emphasize that in the second half and will you set back and play to win this game defensively? No, we won't set back for sure. I mean, we, we're gonna play and, and be who we are, which is to put the ball on the ground and play and combine. Um, I think now with the wind at our backs, it's a pretty strong wind, so we were struggling to get out of the back sometimes. Uh, so we're gonna talk a lot about putting the ball on the ground and, and when they're playing you know, long balls and the flick-ons and all those things, just giving good cover when we win it, just to make sure we keep it. But we also have to play with a, with a purpose and not just keep it to keep it. We've gotta open them up width-wise so that we can, uh, we can have some penetrating runs. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, Coach Mike Friesen of San Diego State. The Aztecs lead it one nothing. We'll see what happens in the second half. Can New Mexico come back in the 2012 Mountain West Soccer Championship game? With a five-star overall safety rating and Scion Service Boost Complimentary Maintenance Plan, the Scion TC is made to handle the streets.
Golden Corral's all-new, all-American carving station is open. It's like the pork steamship round came off a fancy buffet in Vegas. It's Golden Corral's all-American carvers. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet, all for one amazingly low price, and it's only at Golden Corral. Did you know the General and its companies have provided low-cost auto insurance for 50 years? And they're rated excellent by the nation's leading financial rating service. Customers give the General a 97% satisfaction rating. And they have discounts to save you money. And affordable monthly payments. Whether you need minimum coverage or maximum protection, call or click for an anonymous free quote today. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time! Have you been diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat? Do you take a blood thinner to reduce your risk of stroke? Blood thinners, like Pradaxa, have been associated with an increased risk of severe bleeding and even death. If you or a loved one took Pradaxa and suffered from internal bleeding or had a stroke, you may be entitled to compensation. Don't hesitate to find out if you have a claim. Call 1-800-913-7810 now for your free legal consultation. Again, that's 1-800-913-7810. At halftime, San Diego State leading New Mexico 1-0 in the Mountain West Women's Championship game, soccer, here on CBS Sports Network. Earlier today, the Big East Women's Championship was taking place, Marquette and Georgetown. Marcus Roeder is the head coach, and Marquette said neither team, Georgetown or my team, gets incredibly forward. And at the half, I was watching this matchup, and it was 0-0. But for Marquette, Taylor Madigan scores with two minutes and 28 seconds left in regulation. Going down to UTEP, that's El Paso, Texas, University of Central Florida. Nicolette Redovich scores on the first one, and UCF coming back, and Jennifer Martin for Central Florida crossing it and getting that header by Jennifer there, and a nice Conference USA matchup. Good women's soccer on this Sunday afternoon. And we've had some good soccer as well here in the sunny San Diego area. San Diego State leading New Mexico 1 0 at the half. I have no idea as to how I'm going to be paying for college. I'm the second oldest of 14 children. I'm currently working five nights a week. I am paying for law school on my own. Let me tell you about my goals, my ambitions. I'm really passionate about human rights policy making. I want to help a lot of people in my life start my whole business. I want to make an impact on my community. I'm pleased to present you with this check for $100,000. Dr. Pepper is giving away over a million dollars in tuition. Share your story at drpepper.com. The Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Is it a 20-minute shorter wash cycle? Or a 20-minute longer lap cycle? Is it 20% less time in here? Or 20% more time out here? Is it 20% more storage capacity? Or 20% more fun capacity? LG's innovative line of appliances let you fast forward to moments that matter. So, is it an appliance or something better? Why do I like this new Buick Verano? It lets me audible. OnStar, how can I help you? Check, check, 287, orange barrel, reroute. Sending new route now, Mr. Manning. My then. Phone call, Papa Bear, hut hut. Hey, Peyton, just fired up the grill. Better hurry. Tune, XM60, outlaw. If you don't know the innovative Verano, then you don't know Buick. It's like being on the field, just more luxury. This is a great chicken sandwich. Oh, yeah, it is. Whoa, what's going wow. on there? Wow. I just got my mind blown. Because it's so good? It's so good. Yeah, I like to make note of every time my mind's been blown. This oh, is number 53. Nice. First was being born. That makes sense. Two, Obviously. my first hat. Oh. Yeah. Every other time it's been here, it's on. Yeah, I know, man. It is such a good sandwich. <laughs> Woo! 54. The Asiago Caesar Chicken Sandwich. Part of our all-new premium chicken lineup. And try it with our creamy cheesecake bites. This is how you Sonic. Lots of enthusiasm for the Aztecs here. 
on the campus of San Diego State. And the Aztecs lead it one nothing at the half. Joe Castellano and Tammy Blackburn with you. It's a, really a breezy afternoon now, but it's very warm, around 90 degrees. And all the awards come out at this time of year. The first team, All Mountain West, which is normally called the best 11. Actually, there are 12 players on there and no goalkeeper. And a lot of San Diego State dominance with Tiffany Hurst and Haley Palmer. And the forward position, Keen and Gerardo, no surprise there with Carly Johnson shoring things up in the middle. And Rachel Montoya gets the nod as a midfielder for University of New Mexico. Well deserved by Rachel Montoya. And they were so good, so many good players. Joe, you're right, they had to add an extra player. And San Diego State dominates in this category as well, the all-conference awards. And we talked a lot about Megan Gerardo being the offensive player of the year. Really no surprise there that San Diego State across the board with their number six ranking in the nation. You've got to be well coached by Mike Friesen. You've got to have good offense and defense and be committed to both sides of the ball. And that's why you see Haley Palmer and Megan Gerardo being awarded with these players of the year. Coming up, we'll have highlights of the first half. San Diego State, they are happy ahead. one nothing over New Mexico. They are a glowing example of what it means to be the best. And at this special time of year, they shine even brighter. Come to the winter event and get the Mercedes-Benz you always wished for. Now, for an exceptional price. Lease a 2013 GLK 350 for $3.99 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. The primary target is Osama Bin Laden. Capture or kill. We are comfortable with either outcome. SEAL Team 6, The Raid on Osama Bin Laden, a world premiere tonight at 8 on the National Geographic Channel, Channel 276. So what happens if I'm in an accident and need to get my car fixed? Progressive makes it easy because we give you choices. You can pick where to get your car fixed, we can cut you a check, or at our service center, we take care of everything for you. <laughs> oh, so many choices. Take your time. The service center. Okay. Giving you choices. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. I'm a non-attorney spokesperson. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Mesothelioma is a rare cancer, one of many linked to asbestos exposure. Exposure to asbestos in mills, shipyards, or in the heating, construction, and automotive industries may have put you at risk. Secondhand exposure to people close to you may have also resulted in mesothelioma or another asbestos-related cancer. Please don't wait. Call 1-800-537-5443. That's 1-800-537-5443. At the half, San Diego State leading New Mexico 1-0. And joining us now, the head coach for New Mexico, Kit Vela. Kit, tell us about the first half, uh, what you liked, and it looked like uh, your offense got in gear there for a little while, and the defense did a nice job. Defense did really well. Um, I think we just have too many players too wound up. They wanted a little too much, and... Uh, you know, they were a little nervous in the beginning and uh, couldn't generate a whole lot of offense, kept dropping off. But I think we brought some young players on. That was a bright spot, and they did a really nice job of, of generating some offense and some enthusiasm, some uh, energy. Hopefully we can carry that to the second half. Coach, you were just on this field about 10 days ago. You're familiar with this field. You know and you feel that you can beat San Diego State. Being down only one nothing. what was the message to your team in the locker room about how close you are? No, just have fun and play hard. I mean, I, I think nerves set in a little bit too much, and... Um, I don't think we're having a whole lot of fun playing, and we're usually a, a pretty fun team to watch. So they just need to have fun and, and do what they know how to do and play hard and create some opportunities and try to make the most of them. Thanks, thanks, Coach, and uh, good luck in the second half. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right, that's Kit Vela, the 12-year head coach at New Mexico. And in the first half, we only had that one goal. Well, San Diego State teed it up on a set piece. That's a corner kick they set up for the outswing. And number three, Kelsey Booth gets her head on it with the assist. And number 17, Carly Johnson, after a miscue, New Mexico could not clear it. 
you got to love the different angles and the positioning. And you take a look at shots, Joe. For me, it stands out. San Diego State has taken seven shots, but let me make a note of that. Six different players have taken those seven shots, while New Mexico has three shots, only two different players. So they're going to have to put some numbers forward. New Mexico is if they want to score. Booth, her third goal of the year, and two of them have come against New Mexico this year. What are the keys in the second half now? You can kind of go back and revisit them, Tammy. Interestingly enough, Kit Bella just said it. She wants her team to play hard, and I'll add that she just wants her team to have fun, didn't feel like they were having fun. Can this team bring out 45 mo more minutes and score? You heard Mike Friesen before he went into the locker room. He said, we have to play with a purpose, and that possession he talked about so much, they are already spreading the field so nicely and playing with a purpose. And remember, as we talked about earlier, San Diego State just devastates opponents in the second half. They've outscored their opponent 20 to one in the second half. So it's a tall order here for New Mexico. One of the things I thought that the Lobos did well in the first half was their goalkeeper, Kelly Cornell, had several chances there that San Diego State could have made it two or three nothing and she was able to come out of the goal and make some stops. When you think about New Mexico, they're trying to repeat. They won it last year. And uh, you see a lot of uh, BYU, UNLV, and San Diego State, of course, won it in 2009. And this was tournament winners. New Mexico trying to repeat as a tournament winner. But let's not forget how good this team was in regular season. New Mexico winning it in 2010, going to the NCAA tournament. And last year went to NCAA as well. Not, not only being the tournament winners, but the regular season as well. And we take a look at this flashback, some highlights of 2011 Wyoming versus New Mexico. So this is down in Albuquerque, New Mexico, a home game, if you will, for New Mexico as they took the championship. They were an awfully good team. They lost a few players but are returning several good players here today. They combined some veteran players with young players as they hoist the trophy looking to do that again. But they're climbing an uphill battle. You saw Natalie Jenks score there, Jennifer Williams. And Kit Vela is trying to figure out how to get her team back in this game, get into the NCAA tournament if they can win this game. And here we go, San Diego State in the white uniforms, going from our left to our right as they start out. And Mexico in the red unis. And Cornell quickly covers this one. We emphasize time of possession, New Mexico 37%, San Diego State 63%. Mike Friesen very pleased with that. He'd love to see it be more like 70-30, especially in the second half as they defend this one nothing lead. Joe Castellano and Tammy Blackburn here on the campus of San Diego State for the Mountain West Women's Soccer Championship. And now New Mexico trying to set things up. Number 10 is Elba Olguin, the junior from Albuquerque. Little, uh, we've seen several of these collisions as going down to the ground was Olguin. No surprise. I mean, soccer's a physical sport. And these two teams having some great history going after each other. Neither team is going to back down. In fact, I would expect it to be a little bit more chippy in the second half. That one's headed towards the goal, but an easy stop there for Boaz. And here's the kick by Boaz. It covers about three quarters of the field, and then it goes out on the near sideline. What I'm looking for from New Mexico is playing with a sense of urgency, but not panicking. I think they need to be aggressive, but they can't be overly aggressive and get out of position because San Diego State is so good in counter, and they will play direct soccer if they have to. I'm looking for that sense of urgency from the Lobos that they desperately need. This gets kicked out. Here they come. And that is a player that we talked about a little bit earlier, Jordan Craig. We told you uh, her story about being a 60-year senior. Will we see more playing time from her in the second half? Here is Olguin for New Mexico. A little bit of operating room here for Webster. Pass ahead. Oh, it's knocked away. That could have been an opportunity for Montoya. 
Big bounce, and it goes out. Well, I think this is a good strategy by New Mexico. They want to play it right up the middle, and they want to attack that back line, so they look to play directly with playing the ball low on the ground. And Carly Johnson, number 17 for San Diego State, is forced to have to step in because she had been beaten by the New Mexico forwards, and there was a good opportunity for the Lobos to score. Yeah, if that pass connects, Montoya would have been one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper. And here come the Lobos again. It goes out on the far sideline. Second half. Mexico is a better scoring team, but they give up more goals, so they probably take more chances. There's been a lot of one nothing soccer matches throughout this conference, not just from both of these teams, but a variety of teams throughout. And New Mexico has to be careful about how many goals they do give up in the second half. And San Diego State being very good in that category. Well, it's been an amazing ride here, not giving up any goals at all. I mean, over 400 minutes for San Diego State without giving up a goal. And now we've got a player down. And unfortunately, I believe, is that Jordan Craig? Natalie Jinx is down, number six red for New Mexico. Yeah, you're right. And she gets tangled up. I'm trying to see if she is grabbing any particular part of her body. Of course, we will not speculate at all, but the training staff is on the field and they are tending to her and she looks like she is in some significant pain. Well, it's the second time in this game. She went down on a tackle earlier and was down for a little while and got back up. This time, it appears to be worse. She's in significant pain now, so we're disappointed to see this here for Natalie Jenks, the senior from Albuquerque. You know, this is a huge loss if Jenks has to go out of the game and can't return, and we, and we don't know, we're not speculating at all. But if they lose her, she is one of those three-headed monsters that we talked about in the open, a scoring threat for New Mexico, she's 5'7", but she's very athletic. And she plays with good pace. She's a good ball winner in the air. She settles nicely, and that bodes well for a style in New Mexico where they play over the top. So if they get that long kick, she can settle it, turn, and wait for her options. When you take an element away like that, that Jinx brings, that hurts. Well, they only have three shots, and she has one of them, and she's going to have to be carried off the field. We'll continue here in the second half, one nothing. San Diego State on CBS Sports Network. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, gotta be me. Feeling buried by all the piles of paper in your home or office? Maybe it's time you traded in the old filing cabinet for a new office assistant. Meet the Neat Desk Scanner and Organizer, the only scanner that actually thinks while it scans. With Neat Desk, all your important documents can be easily scanned and then organized with the NeatWorks software. So that shoebox full of receipts instantly becomes a manageable expense report. That stack of business cards can go directly into your computer's contact list. Virtually any piece of paper automatically automatically becomes a searchable document that you can find with a simple keyword. And here's the best part. If you call or visit us at tryneat.com right now, you can try the Neat Desk or the amazing Neat Portable Scanner for 30 days absolutely free. We'll even pay for the return postage if you decide to send it back. That's how confident we are that you'll love your Neat Organizer. So give us a call or go to tryneat.com for your 30-day free trial and say goodbye to all that paper. Have you been diagnosed with an irregular heartbeat? Do you take a blood thinner to reduce your risk of stroke? Blood thinners, like Pradaxa, have been associated with an increased risk of severe bleeding and even death. 
If you or a loved one took Pradaxa and suffered from internal bleeding or had a stroke, you may be entitled to compensation. Don't hesitate to find out if you have a claim. Call 1-800-913-7810 now for your free legal consultation. Again, that's 1-800-913-7810. Natalie Jinks has to check out with an injury. She was carried off the field. The Lobos play on, trying to come back down one nothing here in the second half. Joe Castellano and Tammy Blackburn with you on a warm afternoon here in San Diego, California. A pass in for San Diego State. Olguin trying to fight for it for New Mexico, but it's booted past midfield. And that one is kicked back to the goalkeeper, Cornell. Mexico has to play on without one of its best players, Natalie Jenks, Tammy. How are they going to be able to come back in this game without her? Well, I think I, I just mentioned this again. They're going to play direct soccer. She was one of those players that could settle the ball and wait for her options, hold a defender off. They're just going to need a little bit more of that. I don't think they're going to try to change their style. They need to play a little direct, especially they're trying to find the right balance of defense and offense. You just lose a great score, though, when you have Jinx. But here's the good news. Let me, let me finish and wrap this up. As she was being rolled off the field, her team got in a huddle, and we had a camera out there with a mic, and they all said, keep pressing. Let's not let this get us down. We'll keep pressing if you, our defense, has our backs. And they all said, yes, we have your backs. Is there one or two players, maybe, that you think have to step up here for New Mexico? I think Montoya is, is a player that I want to see step it up, and she's already stepped up all season, but she can ratchet it up a notch. On the free kick here, in the middle shot is wide. Great opportunity there. I believe that was Hannah Keene on the shot. Long and lanky and takes a step to the ball, and that's why she had a good chance. She comes to the ball. She doesn't wait for that ball to get to her. It was a perfectly served ball on this free kick. That was Keene with the chance. And here comes New Mexico. Down one nothing. Olguin tries to pass ahead, does, and it's knocked away. Another charge by the Lobos here with Olguin again. Floats it ahead up the sideline. Will it stay in? No. I still like the way New Mexico pressed on that offensive sequence. They had Montoya running the left. You had Jordan Craig running just about parallel with Montoya up the middle. You had number seven, Stephanie Rowe, who's one of those other players now that Jinx isn't in the game. She's a scorer. And all three of those players have to be interchangeable at this point, and they have to get forward and finish if they have a chance. This one's kicked all the way to the near sideline for San Diego State. Aztecs they're trying to make something happen on offense here. As Keen kicks it back. Barba goes across the field for Palmer. Now they working in the middle. Palmer and our featured player, Megan Gerardo, the offensive player of the year, handling it. Offensive player of the year in the conference. Now it's kicked out of there as Montoya kicks it ahead into. Midfield. <laughs> now it is San Diego State trying to get things going on offense as Dorado plays it ahead and can't connect on that pass. And Cornell comes out to grab that one and collided with Hannah Keen. We've seen so many collisions in this game. I think the referees are calling a nice, clean game. They're making sure that these teams are playing the ball. And that certainly is inadvertent there. We really have to be physical to play in this championship game today. And talked about the Aztecs and their domination. And this is what they lead the conference in. The Aztecs, shots, goals, assists, all the important categories on offense and then goals allowed as well. Hard to come back against a team like that. 
But Lobos now making the effort. Montoya in a battle there. And this is going to go San Diego State's way. So here off the free kick, the Aztecs. It's 4-4 in that category, by the way, free kicks, as Cornell collects it. Now Cornell bringing it out and plays it up the right side. That one's pushed ahead. Coming out is Boaz, who really hasn't been busy so far in the second half. Boaz waving her teammates down the field, trying to launch one here, and does. There's assistant coach to Mike Friesen, Juan Pablo. Uh, Juan Pablo was recruited by Mike Friesen because he felt like there was a missing element to this team, and that was the sports psychology element. Juan Pablo has a sports psychology background, had coached at the Division II level, and he worked with that goalie right there for San Diego State, Rachel Boaz. And what he did was he changed, it, changed her mindset, and she is now more confident in goal. She was very, very good soccer player in terms of physically and tactically but with the addition of Juan Pablo. And there was a wonderful article on NCAA.com about this and how he has changed the mindset of this team. When you think about Boaz, I mean, you go through 20 games on the schedule, you only give up 10 goals. And that equals out to the 0.51 goals against average first in the conference. She said nine shutouts second in the conference. Here's somebody else that he worked with, Megan Gerardo. Her first three seasons, she scores three goals each season. How many goals has she scored this season? 14. She says he has given her the confidence that if she takes a risk, there will be a reward. And he has also trained her team to reward her even when she takes risks. And that's the sports psychology that he brings to this squad. There's another collision. And the Lobos get the better of this one. And here they come down the middle of the field. And Olguin tried to pass a little interior pass there, but it's knocked away. He's looking for Stephanie Rowe. Rowe trying to chase this one down, but Boaz comes out and handles it. Well, I like the long range opportunity. You got to take what you can get if you're in New Mexico. They'd love to get it in more, but Roe was just a bit out of position. However, I loved her effort there as Rachel Boas had to come off her line. She had a player, a defensive player, screening Roe so that she was protected, but good effort by New Mexico. Gerardo passing it over to Hurst as they move it forward, but it's booted back into San Diego State territory. The Aztecs trying to control things here with the 1-0 lead. In the middle of the field now. One-on-one -on -one battle there. And Keen wins it for San Diego State. Here is McClinchy. And that one goes out. Fans were calling for a corner here, but they're not going to get one. Craig checks out. Geis checks in. Lindsey Geis back in the game, trying to give him some energy. A freshman from Fort Collins, Colorado. Barba handling this one for San Diego State. Here comes Barba. Taken away. Good defensive play and in transition, here come the Lobos. As O'Connor made that play, she's been making a lot of plays. Ellison for New Mexico. Pass headed towards the middle, but knocked away. Another header here. And a good sliding job there to just knock it away and out. And flush out any threat. Nicely played ball and a very good clear by San Diego State. New Mexico wants to attack. They continue to make a, a run at San Diego State. She tries to cross the ball. And SDSU right there on the line clearing it. And you see both of these teams going at it 1v1. Now Cornell 
handles this one for New Mexico. And a line drive boot. That one goes out, so San Diego State will have another chance to control here with Palmer to pass it in. Palmer lobs it in, Keen handles it, gets it back to Palmer, the defensive player of the year in the conference. Palmer gets double teamed, New Mexico has it, and it was Rowe trying to control it herself, but it's taken away, and Boaz pops it to midfield. Fans thought that that was touched with the arm of Halverson, but the officials didn't see that, or didn't say that she did. Here's Montoya. Montoya trying to angle towards the middle, and it's kicked out of there by Booth. Nice job. Booth made a couple of nice defensive plays in addition to scoring the only goal of this game. I said earlier that I was going to look for a sense of urgency by New Mexico, and I've seen that. Let's keep in mind that with just over 30 minutes, there likely is only 30 minutes left in their season if they don't score and tie this up and take this into either overtime or PK situation. It is do or die for New Mexico. For San Diego State, there's a lot of soccer to be played. Well, the fact that UCLA lost to USC this past Friday helps San Diego State chances. They want to host and they want to host all the way through. And also important to remind the viewers at home that the College Cup will be played right here in San Diego across the Interstate 8 freeway at University of San Diego. And what a nice treat that would be. Mike Friesen told us yesterday to be able to go across and, and play at a university that no notoriously is our city rival. 61st minute of this game, 1-0 San Diego State. As Rowe passes to Montoya, did it go out? No, yes, it did. I thought it did. Finally, the whistle came a little later than I expected. San Diego State has no blemishes on their record. In fact, they have a lot of stars. They had a quality non-conference schedule. They have veteran players, a great season in 1998, and then again in 2009, and they feel this has been one of their best since that time. Well, Mexico's been making a pretty good push here in the last few minutes. Controlling the ball, and they've been forcing the action a little bit. San Diego State knows how to play in these tight situations. A victory over Santa Clara, three to two, and overtime victory to, to or actually a tie with Santa Clara. Victory one nothing at Pepperdine. Those are all top ranked teams. Well, they started the season, San Diego State did, with six straight shutouts. They have 11 of those on the year, and now they have three in a row coming in as they shut out Air Force, New Mexico, and UNLV before this game. Well, Joe, earlier you told us that this San Diego State team is undefeated here at the SDSU Sports Deck. Imagining when you host in the tournament, you're playing on your comfort field, already having defended your home turf. Great to have you with us here this afternoon, Joe Castellano. And Tammy Blackburn, our entire CBS Sports Network crew. A beautiful afternoon for soccer and the women's championship of the Mountain West Conference. The defending champs, New Mexico, trailing 1 0 to the regular season champs this year, San Diego State. So we uh, broadcast here at the sports deck, situated above a parking structure. The beautiful facilities here at San Diego State. Only goal of the game came in the 23rd minute of the first half as Kelsey Booth off the corner kick scored and got the, the Aztecs on the board. Johnson had the assist on that goal and that's been it. Now we got another player down. The shots are eight to three in favor of San Diego State. Natalie Jenks left the game with an injury for New Mexico. They played inspired soccer since. Here's Rowe, moving it ahead, and now Rowe goes down. Rowe is shaken up. That is not a player they want to lose. Stephanie Rowe, one of their top players. In fact, five goals, tied for first on the team. Right leg. 
trying to walk it off. It's gonna be a free kick here for New Mexico. Rowe is gonna continue. Apparently your foot got stepped on there. So now Montoya will tee this up for New Mexico. And the clock is stopped, which gives New Mexico a little bit of extra time. Montoya to kick it. Lost one high in the air, looking for a header, and it's headed out of there by San Diego State. Good team defense. Now the Lobos pass it back in. Get it to the middle of the field now for Sinead. Fleming Sinead, a senior from Pasadena, California, but San Diego State now will have an opportunity. Pleased with New Mexico's possession, especially when they are in their half of the field offensively, but they're really going to need to show that they can actually do something with it. In other words, they need to be productive out of that possession, and they haven't quite gotten in the position to be able to strike that ball on frame and get that ball inside the 18. Matt's checking in for Hurst. In the San Diego State side of things. A couple of one-on-one -on -one battles going on here. That one goes out as Webster is trying to control for New Mexico. This ball gets passed in by Irwin. And here's Rowe, who appears to be okay after she was shaken up just a few minutes ago. Now here comes San Diego State on the break. Pass ahead and led too far. Almost had a connection there as it was Healy Locker sprinting towards the goal. Now here is Locker. And Sinead controls that, wins that individual battle. Goes to Olguin. Olguin with the nifty moves. And that one cannot be controlled by Locker. We know that San Diego State can play direct. Now they are a possession oriented team, but they can be zippy and they can also play a long ball. And you see the long ball here, just a nice through ball from the middle. And they are looking for number 22, Haley Locker. And the reason why they play direct with her is she is probably the paciest player, sets the temp on this SDSU squad. And that pace, according to Mike Friesen, literally sets her above some of the rest of the players in this conference. Good strategy. We got another injured player. I believe that is Victoria Barba for San Diego State. And that would hurt because she is one of their important players, the freshman from Albuquerque. She's not just important. She is probably the best technical player in this conference. She is just a freshman. How she got out of Albuquerque, New Mexico without <laughs> playing at New right. University of New Mexico, although she had narrowed it down to a school in Texas and in San Diego State. She has had a great season for San Diego State as a freshman. Marisa Fraticelli, the senior from Pleasanton, California, checks in for San Diego State. Placing Barba. That's the first time we are seeing Fraticelli in this game. In transition, here comes New Mexico. Alguin on the move. Passes ahead for Rowe, but led her too far. Good defense again by San Diego State. They have been able to clamp down when necessary. NFL Monday QB returns tomorrow on CBS Sports Network at 6.30 Eastern time. The crew will break down all the games that happened in the NFL the past few days. That's NFL Monday QB tomorrow, 6.30 on CBS Sports Network. Phil Sims, Rich Gannon, Steve Berline, Dan Fouts. I like Steve Berline as an analyst. Watched him yesterday. Yeah, he does a good job. He's solid, just solid all around. I think he breaks down the game well. And Phil Sims, of course, on the A crew for CBS with Jim Nance. Here's Gerardo. San Diego State loses possession there. Now it's Rowe, the middle of the field. Tries to head it forward, and it's intercepted. Now, some 
hustle on the near sideline here by McGlinchey. Here comes Rowe for New Mexico. Rowe veering to her right. Pass ahead was knocked away. Now here come the Aztecs with Gerardo sprinting towards the goal. Gerardo scoring opportunity, shoots, and it's over the goal. Just lofted it too high. Well, this is what I was talking about by New Mexico. Here they are on the counterattack. They have an opportunity to move up the field, whether they go direct or possessive, but San Diego State steps in, and if New Mexico continues to not be productive out of a counter, San Diego State will continue to enjoy runs up the left or the right-hand side by players like Megan Gerardo, who can score, and they can score in a hurry. It's still 1-0, San Diego State. Just yeah, under 22 minutes to go in this one. The Mountain West Championship. Now the Aztecs have it again. And it goes out on the far sideline, so New Mexico gets a run at it. The sport is so fickle, though. It's only 1 0. And I know Mike Friesen is thinking, man, we still got over 21 minutes left in this match. And it is not over by any stretch of the imagination, especially with New Mexico and the traditional rivalry that these two teams have set up over the past several years. Anything can happen. It's, a, it's tournament time, and it's a real funny sport. But the half, Mike Friesen told us that he wanted to spread it out more. Has San Diego State been able to do that? Oh, sure. They, they've kept it out of the middle nicely, but they've actually reversed the field of play or, or switched the field of play, if you will, through the middle. They were looking for Montoya there, but couldn't connect. We have seen New Mexico possess the ball a bit more here in the second half, which is obviously important for them. 70th minute now as Alguin passes over to the near sideline to Montoya. Montoya makes the move, feeds it back to Alguin. Into the middle. Little move there and a shot. Didn't get a good piece of that. Lindsey Geis on the move. Now it is punched forward and it goes out on the far side. 9-4, a shot's advantage for San Diego State in this game. Sophie Metz pushes ahead for Gerardo. Now they try to set up a play here. Might have been looking for Gerardo on that pass, but it was knocked away. It's Fredicelli trying to make it happen for San Diego State, but it didn't work out, and here comes New Mexico. I guess you're not used to grass, but Dylan O'Connor on the sideline there, trying to hit Geis. But the Aztecs have it with Palmer. That pass ahead intercepted. And it's booted high in the air for Montoya. She can't locate it. It's headed out. Now set up from the top. Shot saved by Boaz. Off the shot by Irwin. Lauren Irwin with a good opportunity. I like the idea by New Mexico. It's a long range shot, but SDSU was getting back and she had an open spot. You see it there. I mean, it's right on frame. And fortunately for San Diego State, Boaz is there. Take a look again. This is Irwin. Keep in mind, she is a central defender for the Lobos. Look at how far forward she gets, and she knows that she's got a team behind her that will cover her in case the counter happens by the Aztecs. Saves are two apiece now. You know, both of the saves, I think, for Boaz, she would say weren't the most difficult. I mean, they were shot right at her. She didn't have to move too much. Mike Friesen probably not as comfortable with how New Mexico has had their chances. Possession has been in their favor. Montoya shot blocked. Olguin has it though. New Mexico starting to dominate play here. Well, they're Ol picking it up. Yeah, they really are. Sinead pass in the middle. It's deflected. Boy has got a piece of it and saved that one. Another 
injured player for New Mexico. One of the best offensive sequences and best chances New Mexico will have here in this entire match. Boaz comes off her line. There's a bunch of red jerseys. Number five for New Mexico. That's Fleming. She sets it up. Rowe went flying. And that's her right there, Stephanie Rowe, who's had kind of a painful game. I mean, she went down earlier, got back up. And now you can see that she's breathing hard. Brianna Webster comes out. Leva checks in for the Lobos. Wheeler in. Craig back in. Oh, long pass. Gerardo all alone, setting up. And now steps back, shoots, save. Rebound score. Great save initially by Cornell, but she left the rebound. And Halverson, Sarah Halverson was there to put it home. Gerardo makes a run. Watch it. She needs a nice cut back by Gerardo. She crosses it, keeping it low. Shot on frame. Cornell spills the ball. And Halverson is there for the cleanup. Halverson, a substitute that comes in for Hannah Keen up front. She pushes number forward, Gerardo, with a brilliant strategy. What do I mean by that? She lets the numbers get in front of her, so in case Cornell spills the ball, somebody's there. 2-0, Aztecs. Is it an insurmountable lead now? As they celebrate, fifth goal of the year for Halverson. That's a great job of being in the right place at the right time after the shot by Gerardo. You take a hard shot like that, Tammy, I mean, it's hard not to leave a rebound, right? Yeah, and it was low to the ground. And, the, and it, again, it was two smart plays by Gerardo. This is why she is one of the best strikers in the nation. She waited to let her numbers come and support her. She also kept it low on the ground, and there's a chance for an errant bounce, especially on a hard surface. It's hot. This ground is hard. Cornell spills it, and Halverson was there. There were a couple of other white jerseys around as well. Locker comes in for San Diego State. Gerardo gets a breather. Doesn't get many of those, right? Well, Haley Locker's <laughs> cousin, Jake Locker, the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, must be awfully proud of the bloodlines and the numbers that Haley Locker puts up. A good substitution, though, by Mike Friesen giving Locker a chance. So the Aztecs are up 2 nothing, with just under 15 minutes to go in this match. Championship game for the Mountain West title as San Diego State tries to win for a second time in the last four years. They won in uh, 2009. Start to feel the momentum build for San Diego State and a little bit of dejection by New Mexico. This is not a New Mexico team, though, however, and I've known this team for a long time, called a lot of Kit Bellas games. They will not lay down and make this easy for San Diego State, but San Diego State has certainly been wearing on them throughout this match. Well, the Aztecs, this is their fourth appearance in the tournament final. They're one and two. As this shot was close, but went to the right side of the goal. Well, a different setup by the Aztecs there, setting up on the in-swinger from that other side, and you hear you see the in-swinger, but that ball wasn't even playable from the get-go right off the foot on top of the crossbar. Well, we're on the top of the crossbar, as you said, it hooked a lot. Kind of like my golf shot <laughs> off the tee. <laughs> Looks like mine, too. <laughs> it's either a hook or <laughs> I call it a shank. It's so bad. I'll get it right, Joe, one of these days. I got to go take some <laughs> golf practicing. lessons. practicing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, for the Aztecs, too, if you, you follow their program, they, the losses they've had in the tournament final have been in overtime twice, so they didn't want to get to that point. That second goal was huge for the Aztecs here. 
the beginning of the year, Mike Friesen allowed his veteran players, along with some of the new players, to set their own goals instead of the coaches doing it. And he said he wasn't surprised when the players said, we want to win conference and all the other normal goals that we set up. But instead, he said one of the goals was to win a national championship, and he felt like this was the year that that was a realistic goal. Sinead lost it there, and Booth pushes it forward. Now here's Booth again. She scored a goal in the first half for San Diego State. And this is passed ahead. A nice catch of the pass, but then losing it there was Skinner, Jensen Skinner, the junior from Simi Valley, California, transfer from the University of Arizona. Palmer now on the far side. Good first touch there, and now this shot is saved by Cornell. And quickly moves it ahead. Here comes Algeen, who's been in the middle of a lot of action in the second half. And Craig making the move, but we've got a whistle. San Diego State will have it. Jordan Craig. Three goals this year, tied for third on the team. Six year senior. San Diego State trying to control here, use up a little bit of clock as well. Is taken away. Here comes New Mexico. But it's knocked back after the pass by Sinead. Palmer controls for San Diego State. Here comes Palmer passing into the corner. Into the middle shot. And it's knocked away by the defense. As Sinead got a piece of that one, I believe. This would have had to have been a dynamic save by Cornell. But credit to New Mexico's defense for hustling back as Locker had a lot of speed. Remember, she is the player that has the pace on this team. She's going to set it up for Locker here. That was Palmer who dishes it off. Here's Locker with the shot. Excuse me, the cross keeps it low. And again, good defense by New Mexico to not let San Diego State run away with this. There's Locker again sprinting after it. This goes high in the air. And they go sliding down and it goes out. This would be New Mexico ball. And another player down. We've seen so many of them in this game, especially on the New Mexico side. Dylan O'Connor, the freshman, is hurting. to keep in mind the heat here at San Diego State University. It's awfully cool at the beach in the high 60s, just a nice breeze, but right here on top of the, what they call the Montezuma Mesa, in situations like this where the heat, all game, these players don't stay hydrated. They can cramp up when they get tackled like that. And that is the yellow card for number three, Kelsey Booth, who, by the way, got on the board first for San Diego State in the first half. First yellow card as well. That's what you get game. for scoring first, <laughs> yellow card. How about that payoff? No risk <laughs> reward there. <laughs> so the sophomore Booth gets that card, and here's the free kick by New Mexico. A little push there. 80th minute of this game. Now the Lobos with Olguin. Her pass intercepted by Palmer, the defensive player of the year in the conference, and she gets tripped up. It's getting even more physical later in this game. Yeah, here comes the yellow card. And again, I, I think the referees have done a solid job of taking control in this match. We saw it, a very physical first half, no cards in the last minute, two yellow cards, one for Kelsey Booth. Now New Mexico getting a yellow card. Brooke Ellison, 
the junior from Lake Forest, California, gets the yellow card. So the kick here, free kick for San Diego State. Knocked out of there by Montoya. Now Montoya, as New Mexico's running out of time to try to make something happen here. A little over 10 minutes to go in the game. Certainly had some pretty good opportunities early in the second half. Well, San Diego State still being very mindful of New Mexico and their ability to score, especially with a player like number seven, Stephanie Rowe, who we talked about right off the top of the show. Uh, she's a bit of a clutch player. Here's Craig trying to get after it, but it gets knocked all the way to midfield. I'll take you back to uh, senior day for New Mexico where they were playing Wyoming. Of course, at home being their senior day, and Rowe stepped in and with one minute and eight seconds left, had the game winner to enjoy a celebration of senior day. And again, several of those clutch goals coming from her. And she's been playing uh, quite nice up in the forward center position. Rowe gets it back for Olguin to the middle of the field, Sinead. And that pass gets knocked away by San Diego State again. Good defense. Now the Aztecs control. Here comes Skinner for San Diego State. Jensen Skinner gets some playing time in the second half. They're really spreading it out now and using the whole field. Fraticelli, who came into this game in the second half. And here's a shot that goes wide. Good opportunity there as the shot by Halverson, who already has a goal in the second half, had a good chance. Mike Friesen told us at the half they wanted to keep pressing. He wanted them to spread the field, but connect and possess with a purpose. And here's the purpose. You get the ball into the middle after you find the gap and you turn and get a shot on frame like that. Well played soccer. Now Cornell floats one to the middle of the field. And that hit the right arm of the Lobos player. Hit off Brianna Webster. Alverson almost had her second goal of the game. And they line up the kick here as Spots will kick it. And there's another collision. Sinead flips it ahead. It goes out on the near sideline. Had some substitutions here just moments ago as it was Karsic coming in, first out. Dorado back in the game and Locker goes out. That was a pretty lengthy uh, breather there for Dorado. And a long kick ahead, looking for Rowe, but she's going up against two Aztecs. Almost a break there for Montoya, but the Aztecs would have none of that. And here's Sinead for New Mexico. Now Sinead with some room. She's playing a little keep away here, and she was also trying to direct traffic. Now Cornell sets it up and tees one up. At midfield it is Alguin for New Mexico. And after the collision, Sinead has it. Boots it ahead, gets to Craig. Right, San Diego State has it in Palmer. Palmer, nice job knocking that one down. Pushes it ahead, but misses connection with Gerardo. Remember to help the victims of disasters like Super, Superstorm Sandy, text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund, CBS Cares. And again, just a tip of the hat to all of those who worked so hard and our CBS family. So many of them back on the East Coast have suffered all week, but they worked really hard. And I know there are families of these players that also live on the East Coast, want to wish everybody well as they continue to come out and, and uh, try to rebuild from that devastation. 
Yeah, people are going through some tough times back there, so I really hope they can hang in there and, and recover as quickly as possible. Gerardo passing into the middle for Halverson and coming out to grab it. And a nice job again by Cornell. Halverson had another chance there. Well, she took the right angle. Gerardo with the through ball. Halverson chasing, but I think Cornell took the right angle again. A nice through ball by Gerardo, keeps it low on the ground. A little bit too far in front of Halverson. And a very good play by Cornell. Cornell's been very good. She's, she's been going yeah. against a tough attack by San Diego State, no it, doubt. It could be four or five nothing if not for Cornell. As you see her, the 5'10 senior from San Clemente, California. One of many players for Kit Vela in New Mexico who come from Southern California. You see Anaheim, California, Irwin. And Webster comes from Huntington Beach, California. One of the best players on this team. And Fleming comes from Pasadena. Halverson goes out. Keen comes in for San Diego State. They are four and a half minutes from the championship here in the Mountain West Conference. They have a solid chance to host throughout the weekend. It would be so nice for this Aztec team to continue to play on their home turf where they are so comfortable and undefeated. A reminder that UCLA lost to USC. UCLA was second in the nation. Stanford stood at top in the nation. And that loss by UCLA. Here's Montoya with a shot, and it's way too high over the goal. Certainly opened up some doors for the Aztecs to be able to host. Their RPI went to number two. Montoya had one of the better chances of the game right here, but her boot just a little too much mustard. Yeah, spraying the ball around a little bit. Maybe trying to just get something. Kit Bella told us yesterday that sometimes we are too possession minded. I don't think that that has been the case today. They just have not had enough chances. And when you don't have chances, you can't finish. San Diego State looking for its fourth consecutive shutout. They have not been scored upon in over 400 minutes. As Montoya splits two defenders, passes it back, and they keep working it back here, trying to set it up in the middle of the field. Now Montoya, and it's booted all the way down. Nice job defensively by Hans, or uh, check that, uh, Fraticelli actually. Now Cornell comes way out of the goal. You get it to Rowe, to O'Connor. Pass into the middle, deflected around, and San Diego State gets it back. As Karsich handled that one, and now Palmer pushes it forward. Back to get it is Nair. That ball deflected, and now San Diego State was almost going to get a chance, but it goes out. Coming up after our game here, SEC Express, Alabama, LSU. Number one against number five, what a game. So don't miss that, it's coming up next. Two nothing here, San Diego State, with two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the game. And they filled the stands here to root for their Aztecs. Here's a shot and saved by Cornell. Shot there by Sophie Metz. Here's Craig for New Mexico. Battling two San Diego State players and the Aztecs come away with it. They just try to kill some clock here. Get it back into New Mexico territory. Rowe not giving up though. Gets bumped there by Fraticelli. And there is a tie up. Nice job controlling that one by Irwin for New Mexico. Montoya jump, but it goes over her. And now it's kicked out on the near sideline. With only a minute and a half to go for San Diego State to win the Mountain West. Looking forward to hosting, hoisting, I should say, 
the trophy. Mike Friesen calling this a magical year. All the right ingredients made up the right recipe. Felt like this was the year again in 2009, a team that went to the NCAA tournament in 1998. They went to the tournament, but both lost just after the first round victory. They've never made it past that. Mike Friesen really feels like there is a good chance that they can get to the Elite Eight, and he says his players buy into that as well. Well, they've done such a great job in this tournament. And now they're under a minute from winning the championship. A long pass, and another chance there, but they were unable to handle it. That was keen with that chance there. 36 seconds to go. As it's hit high in the air. And now batted around, finally punched out of there and all the way out on the far sideline. San Diego State just content to have the clock run down as they will celebrate the championship and an unbeaten streak now reaching 13 in a row and four straight shutouts. Amazing run for the Spartans. And <laughs> there's the Gatorade for Mike Friesen as San Diego State wins the Mountain West Tournament. They are the champs for the second time in the last four years. A two to nothing victory over the defending champs, New Mexico. And Tammy, just a great day to be an Aztec fan as uh, it was a close game. Finally, they were able to get that second goal by Halverson in the 78th minute to give New Mexico credit for the way they battled. Two very well coached teams and teams that respectively have great players. New Mexico gave it a great run this entire season coming into this tournament championship game. In a do or die situation, they gave it their all. San Diego State was a little better today, a little better being two goals to nothing. They pushed and they pressed. They did not allow New Mexico to get inside the 18 enough for them to get chances to finish. Well, it's great working with you again, Tammy. Had a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching. For Tammy Blackburn and our entire crew, I'm Joe Castellano. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Coming up next, SEC Express.